I'm going to be bringing you guys another video on the VB.net series. Um, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do math operations. Now, you don't even, uh, you don't only need these for calculators, but you can also use them for other math functions that you may need in your program. So, I've already designed my interface to conserve time. Um, as you can see, it's a crappy calculator. But this is just to display how math functions work. I'm going to put like a source code from Pastebin uh, in the description below. So, what we're going to do is, first we are going to, um, we're going to make it so that you can't enter non-numeric values into text box 1 and text box 2. Text box 3 is read only, and this will give us a result. So, we're going to go ahead and click on text box 1. So, this will bring up the text box 1 changed event into the code editor, which is what we want. So we're going to do this by an if statement. So we're going to put if, oh, I'm going to say, if is numeric, oh my god, is numeric, my, my typing is bad today, textbox text. then uh, don't do anything, else error message, I'm um, just, Putting, doing those uh, so that you guys kind of know what's going on. I'm going to put, um, you can only enter numerical values in this field. Oh, my typing is so off. And then message box style critical. Now I'm just going to copy this as statement for the second text box. And I'm just going to change this to text box 2. And I almost forgot something. You're going to need to put... Now, you're going to need to make the text box blank, because if you don't, it'll still put in the non-numeric character, and it won't do the math operation properly. So, clear the text box. And I'm just going to copy this. So, there we go. So, if we go ahead and try to enter non-numeric values in here, like A or S, um, you can only enter numerical values, and it'll clear it. Uh, but if you enter numerical values, it'll work. Even if you try to enter, like, ASIC characters, it will not work. So, now we can go ahead and get into our buttons. Now, some people would just think when you go to, say, the addition button and you put, um, textbox3.text equals textbox1.text plus textbox2.text. So, there we go. So, you'd think that would work. Now, let's go ahead and test it. So, if we put 5 and, uh, let's say, 1, and you hit the plus button, as you can see, it puts 51. Um, what it basically does is it congregates them, because uh, these text boxes have not been converted into numerical values. They're still considered text. So, it'll put the two together, which is not what we want. So, we're going to go ahead and fix that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our code here, and right below public class, we're going to put dim first number as long, and dim second number as long. So there we go. So we've added those into our um, into our code. So now, uh, that basically creates variables. So now what we're going to do is we're going to click on our addition button, and we're going to take out, take out this. And we're going to put dim result as object. Then we're going to put first number equals text box one dot text, and second number equals text box two dot text. Now we are going to put result equals first number plus second number. And then we're going to put text box 3.text equals result. So there it is. So there's basically our code. So now we're just going to go ahead and copy this. Uh, for the minus button, you can just put, uh, you're, we're going to change this little plus to a minus. For multiplication, we are going to change it to an adderisk, which represents multiplication. Uh, for division, we are going to put a slash. And then, yeah, so that's all, all for those four buttons. Now, for cubed root, uh, sorry, square root, cubed root, and to the power of, it's a little bit different. So, I'm just going to go ahead and get into that. So, what we're going to do is, we'll double-click our, oops, uh, wrong button. I just want to remove that code here. 
Okay, so here if we go to our uh, square root button, what we're going to do is we're going to do dim result as object. Uh, first number equals text box one dot text. And then we're not going to put a second number since we don't need one, so I'm just going to do text box two dot enabled equals false. Then I'm going to do result equals math dot sqrt. Uh, there is a square root function built into the math. That's why we imported some dot math. Or did we? Oh, I forgot to do that. Above public class, you're going to do import system dot math. I can't believe I forgot to do that. So now we can do math dot sqrt first number. So there we go. And of course, we're going to do text box three dot text equals um, result. So now for the qvert function, you think it would work the same way, except you just change math.sqrt to math. Dot, um, I don't know something else. Um, but there is actually no math function for cubed root. So we're going to do it a different way. So cubed root is same to the number as uh, to the power of one third. So that's basically what we're going to do. So we're going to do uh, dim result as object. First number equals text box one dot text. Once again, we're going to dis uh, disable text box two. Now we are going to do result equals first number to the power of, um, yeah, that's the exponent, uh, basically the symbol that represents exponent. And in brackets, we're going to put one space slash space three. So that will basically put the first number to the power of one third. Then we're going to do text box three dot text equals result. So now we've got all of our functions except for our power and our pi. So for the power, we're basically just going to take this code, uh, the same one we use for our cube root, except we are going to take this out and replace it with second number equals text box two dot text. And we're going to change instead of first number to the power of one third, we're going to do first number to the power of second number. Well, I think we can remove these brackets as well. So there we go. Now, we think, like, we have all of our functions in place, so let's say we put 5 and 5, added, we put 10, subtracted with 0 times, um, they all work, as you can see. But, once you've clicked one of these buttons, that does not, that does not require text box 2, so it disables it, it disables it permanently, since we haven't re-enabled it. So what we're going to need to do is we're just going to add, um, Text box two dot enabled equals true and everywhere where we uh, need it. So we're just going to put this right here, and you're basically just going to put it everywhere you need it. So put it right here, right here, right here, right here. So there we go. So now if we go ahead and test our program, uh, we can do plus and everything, and as you can see, once it disables it, if we click somewhere where we need it again, it will re-enable it. So basically, um, I'm just going to change this. Oh, oops. And then to the power of. So as you can see, all of our functions work except for pi, so what we're going to do for pi is we are going to do um, text box one dot text equals math dot pi. And we're just going to copy this for text box two. So there we go. So there's all the math functions uh, that you may need in your programs. As you can see, you can enter a number or whatever, and if you put, if you click the pi button, it'll convert that text box's value into pi. Um, and you can put them all, put them both as pi. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below. Comment any questions or comments you have on the video and subscribe. I'll be bringing you guys probably part two for the COD5 custom mapping today. Since I didn't upload any videos on the weekend, I'm sorry for that, I had a headache. And, um, yeah, so I'll probably make up for that by uploading that later. So I'll probably see you guys later on today. Until then, peace.